we're talking about the world of transfers. We're now well into January, January the 11th. Mr. Crook, good afternoon to you. What is going on in your world? Good afternoon. Well, this time in three weeks, Jim, the transfer window will be closed and we'll be in a, a position to assess the winners and losers of the window. But I think plenty of business uh, to be done by lots of clubs up and down the country and abroad yeah. between now and then. Yes, indeed. Manchester United, I think, topped the list this lunchtime. We're talking about the Dean Henderson situation. What's going on with that? What do you know? Yeah, it's a really difficult one, isn't it, for, for Dean Henderson? Because I think probably he would have started the season as Manchester United's number one, but for the fact that he came down with COVID, that enabled uh, David De Gea really to cement his place in the team. And I have to say, I've been quite critical of De Gea for the past couple of seasons, but he's been one of United's standout performers, made a couple of big saves in that FA Cup win against Villa last night. What does it mean for Henderson? It means one EFL Cup appearance, 68 minutes of the Champions League dead rubber at home to young boys last month. That is his season so far. I'm told he's far from happy with that situation. Far from happy that, as you played out from Ralph Rangnick earlier, that his request to leave United a couple of weeks ago had been turned down. He's still pushing to fix himself up with some football in the second half of the season. Big wages, around about 120 grand a week. That would rule out a lot of Premier League clubs. I think, though, clearly not Newcastle. Uh, who would be interested should United and Rangnick's stance change. But I think in some ways, Simon, this highlights a bigger problem at United and we assess every day why United playing so badly and they were shocking again for much of last night. I think one of the issues is the number of fringe players who aren't happy at the amount of minutes they're getting on the pitch. I think that is causing a bit of a, a toxic atmosphere in the dressing room. How would you deal with that if and you th- were the Manchester I- United paymasters? And I think you're right. I think the, the the idea that's being mooted through the press that there's a toxic environment will probably be by a disenfranchised group of players that are no longer part of the ongoing plans. You know, whether that's Anthony Marshall, whether it's J- Jesse Lingard. I'm not suggesting that they are being toxic, but I'm suggesting that they're not part of the long-term planning of the club, so they're probably not the most positive of voices in the dressing room. You'd like to think that leaders inside dressing rooms can ignore background noise, but it would seem there's very few leaders in a Man United dressing room. It would also... In my view, there's not enough leaders in the Man United boardroom. So you're in this bugger's muddle of not a lot of leadership at the top, not a lot of leadership in the dressing room, so you're going to rely on one man to fix it, and that's going to be the manager. And that is why I think, in this instance, Ran- Ranjik has got to be given a little bit of latitude to make decisions. Henderson has, has kept David De Gea honest. And the challenge for him is David De Gea's form has gone up in, in meeting with the challenge that he's got from a real bona fide live one that can take his position in goal. Yeah. So, unfortunately for, for Henderson, he's a victim of his own success. Yeah. He's come in as a live one. De Gea's up to his game. And now Henderson's in a situation where the contract he signed with Man United has put him in an invidious position. If someone wants to come along and pay 30 million quid for Henderson, then United might have a decision to make. But they don't have to make a decision to put him out alone just because the player doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah. Fair point, Simon, fair point. Um, Arsenal fans, any business this lunchtime that we can uh, give them information on, Alex? The last I heard, the player being mentioned, is it Fiorentina's Dusan Vlakovic? Absolutely. Arsenal, the biggest spenders in Europe in January, but it seems Mikel Arteta still wants more additions. It's no secret they're big suitors of the Fiorentina star. Vlakovic has been muted for a while. It's always looked like this transfer was more likely to happen in the summer than in January, but the Gunners are working hard behind the scenes to potentially get that deal done this month. They're aware that there are many other suitors for Vlakovic and really want to steal a march on those. He scored 23 goals, the Serbian, in 28 games for club and country this season. So clearly knows where the back of the net is. In terms of a fee, Arsenal would have to fork out more than £70 million, both in payments <sighs> to Fiorentina Gee. and to Vlakovic representative. That's a huge outlay for a club who've already splashed the cash, as I said, at the start of the season. But I think the big issue here is not so much... That the cost that it would uh, take to bring him to North London is persuading Vlakovic that Arsenal can match his ambitions of being a Champions League player next season. Now, at the moment, they're sitting pretty in the race for the top four. There's lots of competition. And I don't think, Simon, that anybody would bet their mortgage on it that Arsenal will be in the Champions League next season. But you've got this unique ability, if you're any good at what you do, to be able to sell the vision. Because Arsenal have got a history, they've got a, a, a livery, an imagery, an ideology that sells things into people's minds. So if you've got a very good chief executive and a very good football manager and a team that's occupying fourth spot, you'll, be, you'll give yourself a chance to sell somebody the vision, i.e. we 
with you, you are the missing part that completes us. This is Jerry Maguire territory. You complete me. Yeah. You give us the opportunity to be fourth in the league and play in the Champions League, the thing that you want whilst playing yeah. one of the iconic clubs in English football. Yeah. So it's all about how Arsenal pitch a woo, isn't it? These players are hot and cold at this particular time. Uh, Vlakovic featured at the weekend, actually, as you'll probably know. I think it was Monday. Fiorentina played Torino. Torino beat them 4-0. Vlakovic got hooked. Uh, after I, I think about 74 minutes so I mean it's not going too well for him at the moment No maybe a sign that uh, a player's head has been turned as is, is often the case in the January transfer window on the, on the subject of strikers uh, by the way I've been keeping a tally I think it's 652 players that Newcastle have been linked with I was going to ask you about this, this player that they've got they're getting linked to which is this Hugo Ekatidi right? Yes, absolutely. 19 years of age. Listen, got a good goal scoring record in France. I think I read that he's outscoring. He's only played about 30 games, isn't he? (laughs) Exactly. And it's a lot of money, isn't it? 30 million euros is the fee that's being debated for a 19 year old. Is he really going to come in and guarantee to score the goals to keep Newcastle in the Premier League? Exactly. I'm not convinced. There are other clubs interested as well. So it will be interesting to see how that one turns out. I mean, true by the Chris Wood situation, we spoke about this yesterday. And I think Newcastle believe they might have an opportunity here because there may be a release clause <laughs> in Wood's contract. I said yesterday that Sean Dyche didn't want to sell to a relegation rival. Now, I should say I have uh, made a couple of attempts to reach out to Chris Wood's advisors. So far, they haven't confirmed this release clause. Maybe uh, silence is deafening in this situation. He's only scored three goals, I think, uh, Chris Wood, in his last 20-odd matches. But he is a handful in the Premier League. And I guess one of the attractions is that it would weaken a relegation rival. If you take Chris Wood away from Burnley, you would harm their chances of staying up. And Eddie Howe would feel it would improve Newcastle's chances as well. well it's a double whammy, isn't it? And it's Drea. a double whammy, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it not only advances yeah. one, uh, it disadvantages the other. I think it's less important for Burnley because they've signed players like Cornet that have come in and been successful, and you've obviously got other people within their ranks, but they won't want to sell. I'd be gobsmacked. Alex, if somehow there finds a clause in Chris Wood's contract mm. to release him. Mm. Mm. And we're getting into January now, well, Alex. You know, not that long ago, Newcastle fans were celebrating the fact the Saudis were in. We're getting through this month. And Trippier's the only one they've been through get- the door. And we're getting through a a fairly long list when it comes to Newcastle as well. Sources in Italy suggesting they've been in contact with uh, Bellotti, but he wants to see out his contract at Torino. Dominic Solanke was mentioned up in the North East yesterday. My sources at Bournemouth, very quick to shoot that one down. You can see the connection with Eddie Howe, but they want him to stay. And away from the striker hunt, still no breakthrough in negotiations for the Lille defender Sven Botman or Sevilla's Diego Carlos. And you're right, it's the 11th of January... As, as much as they can say they want Sven Botman, he's regarded uh, as one of the up and coming centre backs in Europe. Exactly. If, if it's not going to happen, you, you need to move happen. on to other targets. They want yeah. they wanted players in for Watford on Saturday. Exactly. At the moment, as you say, Jim, it's only Kieran Trippier, and this is a huge game exactly down right. the bottom of the Premier League. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah, it, c- it, crazy. We, we we spoke this morning. You probably heard us earlier. Nothing, but nothing. No amount of money is going to shift Declan Rice in this transfer window, uh, is what we were reliably informed. It would need to start with a two. It needs to be two hundred and above. Uh, that's the kind of crazy scene wow. we're in there. But West Ham, we understand, trying again for a defender. Who is it? Lloyd Kelly, is it? Yeah, and I think actually they'll be met with uh, a similar response to Newcastle when it comes to Solanke and actually a similar response that they're uh, putting out when it comes to Declan Rice. Uh, Lloyd Kelly, he was promoted a captain of Bournemouth at the start of the season. He's such an integral part of their own hopes this season in terms of getting back into the Premier League. You almost can't put a price on him. Uh, no surprise that David Moyes is scouting again, though, in the EFL. He's signed the likes of Jarrah Bowen and Saeed Ben Rama in recent windows from championship clubs. And I wonder if he might take a look at Kiefer Moore uh, at Cardiff, who is available, um, I'm told, and could be a good understudy maybe to Mikel Antonio. So perhaps that's one to keep an eye on. And on West Ham, I mentioned yesterday Darren Randolph potentially heading to Aston Villa. That was pretty much a done deal at one stage yesterday afternoon, but looking less likely now. David Moyes not keen to let Randolph go to okay. Villa. They will still look to bring in an experienced keeper between now and the end of the window, but mm. at the moment it won't be Darren Randolph. Okay, Alex, can we shoehorn this in? We've got time. I think we have. Rudiger, does he stay with Chelsea? I don't think so, Jim. Um, We know his advisors have been in talks with the likes of PSG and Real Madrid. I was told several weeks ago that it didn't matter how much money uh, Chelsea threw at him in terms of a new contract. His heart was set on a move to Real Madrid. And we've seen numerous high-profile examples, maybe Cristiano Ronaldo being the most high-profile of all. When a club like Real Madrid come in for you, 
very difficult for your club to keep you out of their clutches. 